Oh. My dog Houdini's here. Hi, bud. <laughs> What's up guys, Kurt here from Third Island Productions once again, back at you with another video. Today we're going to be doing something special. I just recently figured out how to get a nice vintage like reggae sound. Just using a few Waves plugins and Plugin Alliance, you're able to get a really vintage, crisp, gritty sound. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you guys the track before and after. And then I'm going to show you guys how I got there. Alright, so now we're in our Reason session. And I'm going to show you guys what the tracks are bare bone, the drums, bass, and keys. Now I'm going to show you guys what the reference sounds like after I added all the effects and plugins. Sounds pretty gritty and old school to me. So what I'm gonna do is let you guys know that this track is not finished. I actually started it recently and it's just a new project I've been working on. So you guys are seeing the first of it. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in depth on how I achieved this sound. I'm just gonna act like I would be mixing it on my own time. So the first thing I did was I thought to my head, I listened to some old bands like, um, you know, the Kingstonians, uh, old Bob Miley records, uh, the Gladiators, you know, Studio One style, like, you know, roots reggae music. And um, I actually got inspired by the Frighteners. Big shout out to them. But anyways, going to jump into it. So the first thing I did was I decided to route everything to one bus and I'm going to add my Kramer tape and my Lindell 50 um, API channel. So the first thing I did was I high passed it at about 41 hertz because I didn't want all that extra rumble that was not needed. All right, so what I did first was I put the Lindell 50 channel, get rid of this guy, put the Lindell 50 channel into as an insert effect on my rack in Reason. And Looks like I already did it. I did not zero this one out, but um, and that's because this is bypassed. So here's how the drums sound on the bus. That here is bypassed. So what I did was I put it at about 10K, took 12 dB out. I just took all of it out because it's unneeded. And again, like I said, I turned off that, but I turned on the high pass at 41 hertz. Probably do it a little more, but that's just what I was working with at the time. Um, and that's all I did on the bus for the Lindell 50. And then the magic comes from the Kramer tape. So I already had the settings set up here, um, but I can actually start it to where it was originally. So. Um, okay, back down. Just a little bit of delay. Let's see. Okay. So, I'm going to turn this on. Wow, that's very loud. Okay. So, what I did was I just messed with the record and playback level on the Kramer tape. The Kramer tape's a little new to me. Um, I just started getting into it, so I don't know like the in-depth science behind a tape machine. Um, what I did was, this. these are linked, so I made the record level at three and the playback level at three. And then I had the speed of the tape actually slow. Uh, I'll show you what, you what it sounds like with the different speed of the tapes. Just after messing with it for a little bit, I realized the slower tape speed makes it have that grittier, like, vintage crunch. And you know what? I'll solo the drums. Uh, 
Okay. So then after I did all that, I messed with the flux a little bit and I thought that it made a drastic change. Yeah, it almost like makes it super distorted. And you don't want it too distorted, but just enough. So I messed with the wow and flutter too. That was up here at about 60. Yeah, like the snare drum, it just it sounds like it was recorded in Studio One almost. I mean, I know that's a bold statement because Studio One is, you know, almost impossible to um, replicate, but it sounds pretty close. Sounds pretty cool to me. So what I did also was in the hi-hat... Um, all right, so what I did with the hi-hat was I actually boosted a little bit at 12.5, about 4 dB. Yeah, 4 dB. And then I cut out almost all the mid-range because naturally I like to cut out mid-range out of the hi-hat because it just makes it, um, you know, wonky. That's the only way I can describe it. Uh, and then I high-passed, I remember, at about three, 400 Let's see how it sounds. And I probably need to turn it on and unbypass it. So let's see how it sounds. Without. With. It sounds a little bit more, um, you know, tamed with the overall drum sound. Well, let's go to the toms. All right, so what I did with the toms was I actually boosted the, the high mids a little bit just to hear the toms a little bit more clear. And I left it right here at 240. And I actually boosted a little bit of the low mids as well. And at 100, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I cut out 100 just that extra rumble same with um, the high pass filter I turned that on as well so let's see how the tom sound and again got to turn it on unbypass it yeah it sounds crazy it sounds like a vintage tune and you almost don't even need to add EQ or anything once you add the tape. It just changes everything. But what I usually do with the snare, um, you know, just so it's even with the tape on, so it's a little more clear. I boosted probably 4 dB of 10K and about 5K, same with 4. And then I also high passed it as well. Um, Normally for this, I was like, you don't really need to do like too much surgical EQ. The Like I said, the Kramer tape does all the work for you. So that's the drums. Let me play the drums, the reference, and then let me play. See if I got it close with the reference and then the um, uh, session. One second, I need to unmute. Here's the reference. Here is my session. Totally forgot to mention one other thing. Can't believe I didn't think of this. Um, I also low passed a lot of instruments. I low passed a lot. You could probably get away with getting the sound by just lo low passing everything because that's essentially what it is. Uh, the it's not hi-fi. It's like lo-fi. Turn the high, uh, low pass on for that. Even the, even the overheads, hi hat. Yep. All right, so let's see how it sounds now. Cause it definitely sounded different from the reference. All right, now let's see how it sounds on the session. There you go.
I, I like my reference. I like my reference a little bit better. Um, you know, that's just with some tweaking, but you get the big picture. Okay. Now let's move on to the piano. So Reason has a really cool uh, piano instrument. It's called Radical Piano, and there's so many different sounds you can get with this. It's probably the best piano instrument I've ever used because you can get stuff that sounds new and bright and full and warm, and you can get vintage sounding stuff. So I just went through the different patches, and I loaded Blanket Piano. So let's solo that. Right there by itself, it already kind of sounds vintage. So load it up. Um, I'm actually doing everything in mono. Um, I turned the mono button on my uh, monitor controller because I want this to have a mono sound. I don't want it to sound wide and big. I want it to sound like it's a vintage song. So in the blanket piano, the width, it's set all the way up. And I bring that all the way down. And right here is the like room ambience of how the piano is recorded. And I bring that up a little bit more, the small room. And then also I bring the lows down and the highs down a little bit. And then to make it sound even more like older and vintage, I actually tune the piano up like three cents. So I'll play it um, zero and about three cents. It's barely noticeable. I said three cents. I meant to say like 10, 13. You can hear, you can hear a slight difference. And I think it, you know, changes a little bit. <clears throat> I think it changes the track a little bit more. Um, and what I did was, uh, the mechanics right here, this is really cool, you can get it to, um, the mechanics, what they do is key down, it actually um, has the original sound of someone playing the piano, so it's more realistic, like you have the pedal, using the pedal, or the key down and key up, so it's pretty cool. So I think what I did was, I messed with the key down and the pedal a little bit, so let's see how it sounds, it's, it probably won't make a huge difference. Nothing crazy, just, you know, just a little bit of messing around. Just This is honestly all I did was I just kept messing with all the knobs until it started to sound vintage. That's all I did, especially with the tape, too. And I was very impressed with the um, the Kramer tape. It really, it really is a game changer on those drums. So let's see everything in context. Pretty crazy. Insane. Okay, let's move on to the bass guitar. So the bass guitar is very simple. I just used, here I'll actually pull it out. I just used the Fender Precision Bass right here. I don't know if you see it. This guy. And I turned the tone, I turned the tone all the way down. And I just came up with a bass line really quick just to get something in. Um, so what I did, uh, here's the bass by itself. Okay, I played bass. I'm not a bass player. My brother is. Um, so there's a few mistakes, and I'm going to clean it up, but I just wanted to get some bass uh, laid down really quick so I could you know, show you guys an example. So what I did first was um, I didn't add a compressor at all to the drums, but I added it to the bass. Uh, I thought that it rounded it out a little more. 
So here is the compressor. It definitely makes it louder, but it also rounds it out and makes it nice and even. And I'm barely having any compression. Maybe, yeah, not even a minus three dB of gain reduction. Just a little bit. And then the what made it really sound good, or not, I don't want to say good because this is very subjective, you know. It depends on who's listening to this. You know, a normal music listener could be like, wow, this sounds terrible. Uh, but people who are trying to achieve, people are trying to achieve that vintage sound, um, you know, they might like this sound. So here it is with the Kramer tape. Okay, so what I did for the bass on the Kramer master tape is I brought it down to about... Minus six, change the tape speed once again to 7.5. Uh, and I brought the flutter up a bit. I'm sorry, not the flux, the flux. The flutter was up as well, from what I remember. Um, let's see how that sounds. And I might go in and EQ the bass a little more, uh, but again, this is just an example of showing you guys vintage song. So, yeah, that's basically what I did for the bass. Nothing too crazy. Let's see what noise does. Might as well just mess around a little bit. That probably just add that just adds tape noise, which is definitely probably desired as well. So let's listen to the track let's listen to the track in the session now with everything and I also forgot you cannot forget the hair of spring reverb on the snare I have a snare top and bottom, but I just applied it to the snare top. So let's see how that sounds with the reverb. All right, now let's listen to the reference, see if I got close. So obviously the reference is a little bit uh, better quality. Like this is very, very um, low passed, no high end. I'm honestly starting to like the other one a little bit better. So anyways, for those vintage reggae lovers, um, people who are trying to achieve that sound, this is one way that you can do it. Uh, I don't want to say this is the best way to do it because it's not. The best way to do it is to probably go to Daptone Records or somewhere else where, you know, people know how to do that a little bit better. But this is the closest I could get messing around in Reason with the Waze plugins and my plugin alliance, you know. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This isn't the best way to get towards that vintage sound, but it's definitely a good way to do it. There's probably other people who love to make vintage sounding reggae or any vintage sounding music that might uh, do it differently. But this is how I figured it out in a very short period of time. So check out the Kramer tape and Lindell Audio, the Plugin Alliance plugin. Um, that's how I achieved this sound. So I hope you guys liked it. If you have any questions, comment below, send me a message. Appreciate you guys. Have a good one.